Oh, come on, CRC family, let's give it up for Jesus tonight. That is why we are here to celebrate Him. Come on, give Him your best. Shout of praise in the name of Jesus, not only here in Victoria, Johannesburg, Bloemfontein, and all the other CRCs. And if you're in your home tonight, come on, just jump out of that chair and shout, Jesus. Something happens when you shout out the name Jesus. Well, while we are all still standing, it's the greatest honor and privilege for me to stand on this platform to represent our Lord Jesus, but also to stand in uh, proxy for pastor at this evening. Um, we are blessed with a phenomenal leader. Uh, we're going to clap in a moment. You know, I don't think people always realize what we go through as pastors. And um, we've seen pastor at Stand Strong all his ministry, but especially in the last two and a half years. And I thank God for his leadership for the church internationally and his leadership that we can have locally in CRC. You know, as Pastor I shared this morning, and if you didn't hear the message this morning, you need to get it. You need to listen to it. It's going to change your life, and he's only on point one. It really was a phenomenal message, and it spoke to me. But as he shared this morning, he tore his, two of his tendons off his shoulder Otherwise, he would be here tonight. He tore two tendons of his shoulder when he was on his way to gym. He tripped on a, on a stair. And um, he's going for an operation this week. So I'm asking that we as the CRC family lift him up in our prayers for a speedy, quick, and as painless as possible recovery in the name of Jesus. And at the same time, I want to say on behalf of people of Durban to thank Pastor Ad again. Second time within 10 months that he mobilized CRC to meet the needs of the devastated by the floods recently in Durban, which was really terrible to see what happened, people losing loved ones, etc. And the moment it happened, Pastor Art stood up again and said, come on, CRC, let's be the hands and feet of Jesus. So I want to thank Pastor Art this, this evening, and I want to thank every CRC member on behalf of the communities in Durban that have uh, received the love that we as a church have given. So come on, let's just give it up for Pastor Art tonight. Let's honor him in his absence. Pray for him all the time. Come on, we are going forward. We are not going under. When the enemy pushes us back, we push back harder in the name of Jesus. Well, you may be seated. I want to say this, that our praise is not found in people. Well, peace is not found in people, sorry. Our peace is not found in a place and it's not found in our possessions. Our peace, true peace, is found in His presence. And we've got to prioritize God's presence like never before. And so, Father, as we get into this Word this evening, I pray that You would protect us as the church of Jesus Christ from all danger. That You will prepare us, keep us sharp for opportunity. And that You would promote us for new levels of influence for purpose in the name of Jesus. That, Father, we would live like you are doing what we are believing you for in the name of Jesus. And I really pray tonight that God does something in your heart that will strengthen you in your destiny and in your purpose for Him. I want to say this as I, I start tonight, that you are not defined by the hell you are going through. You are defined by the heaven that you are going to and it's time that we as a church just believe God. Put away the white noise and the negativity and believe God. Believe what He says about you. Believe what He says you can do and do what He calls you to do. You know, some people today would, if, if they had to face Goliath and they were like a David, some people would have told David to pray for Goliath and not cause a scene. But God has called us to slay some giants in our world today. To, and we have the power to possess those battles and to overcome those battles. So this evening, I want to speak to you about the power you have. We're going to celebrate Pentecost shortly. And the Bible says that we have received power to be witnesses. We are not powerless. We are full of power. The God we serve is full of power and we have access to that power and we have to walk in that power and we have to live in that power. We've received the power of God. When we face trials and challenges, 
God is not caught off guard by what is happening around you. Pastor, I said it this morning, what the devil intended for your harm, God will turn around for your good. To save many people alive, it's always connected to purpose. So don't quit the process you're in. Don't quit the promise of God in your journey. Don't quit the purpose that God has for your life. But have the courage to continue no matter what you are facing. We have to recognize God's plan. We don't have all the answers. It's a journey that we have to navigate. You know, we might carry some scars. You might think, I'm, I've got a funny little walk at the moment, but I've got a little bit of a limp. I'm not some gangster from New York. I had a little knee operation a couple of weeks back. I've got a couple of scars that tell me what I've been through. But those scars don't define me. Those scars don't limit me. Those scars are a reminder of the goodness of God. The scars are a reminder of the faithfulness of God. The scars are a reminder of the purpose of God. Stop fretting and looking behind and look to the future that God has got for you. Remind yourself what God has delivered you from. When God speaks to Thomas, and I want to just say this before I, I get into the actual message, where God speaks to Thomas in John chapter 20, verse 27, in the Passion, uh, the passion Translation, it says, then looking into Thomas's eyes, he said, put your finger in here, in the wounds of my hands, and put your hand into the wound, wounded side, and see for yourself. Thomas, don't give in to your doubts any longer. You just believe. Stop trying to reason God. Stop trying to work everything out. Learn to trust Him. We sang about it tonight. We offer ourselves to Him as a living sacrifice. We offer ourselves to Him daily as a living sacrifice, not as a broken sacrifice, not as a hurt sacrifice, not as a sacrifice full of regrets, but a living sacrifice. We're not to be conformed to the pattern of this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds that we can do His good and pleasing will. It's time for us to be the church in this broken world. It's time for us to stand up, not to give in to our doubts. Just believe. There's something special about people. Well, there's something reckless about people who really believe and know that God is with them. There's something special about the CRC family because we have victory before the battle because we know that God is all-powerful that God is still on the throne, that God is still in control. And I want to encourage you tonight, all over South Africa, all over the world, to throw that net out one more time, to start believing again, to start dreaming again, to start taking small steps of faith again. Sure, we've had some tough times. Sure, we've been through some battles. Sure, COVID has been hard on us and we've got some scars, but you're alive, aren't you? God's still got a future plan for you. God's still got good things ahead of you. There's a future in South Africa for our children. There's a future in South Africa for our children's children. The best years are ahead of us. The greatest exploits for the church of Jesus Christ still have to be done. It's time for us to arise and stand and be the witnesses that God has called us to be. And if you believe that tonight, jump to your feet and give God some praise in the name of Jesus. I love it that Pastor is a big proponent of the local church. A big proponent. There's no substitute for us gathering together, coming into the local church, sacrificing our time, our talent, and our treasure to serve the purpose of God in this generation. We have to make God's presence our priority. We have to be fully persuaded by His promises and fully committed to His purpose. Pastor, I said a few weeks ago, and it really st stuck with me, that our faith has to be preserved. And that's why when God called Joshua to, to take over from Moses, he said, be strong and courageous. We have to be strong and courageous in the Word as we serve God. Like he said this morning, the joy of the Lord is our strength. We've got to stay joyful even in the midst of challenges. He said, your faith is something you must pass on. We've got to forget not what the Lord has done and pass it on to the next generation. Your faith is something that you've got to proclaim. Romans 1 verse 16 says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Why? Because it's the power of God unto salvation 
for those who believe. We can't talk about God as the man upstairs, the boss on the cross, the big guy. He's your father in heaven. He loves you. And you can't compare him to an earthly father. And you can't compare him to anything in the natural. He is a God that loves you more than you'll ever understand. And we've got to believe him. And we've got to trust him. And we've got to serve him. Throughout the pandemic, we were given Psalm 23. And it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. How many of you know that since we've been gathering again, we've got stronger in our faith as we come to the local church, as we spend time in the corporate presence of God. He's busy restoring what the enemy tried to steal. He's busy restoring your faith. He's busy restoring your vision. He's busy restoring those dreams. He's busy restoring your purpose in the name of Jesus. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yay! The psalmist was happy. Try and say yay without a smile. Come on, just, just say to your neighbor with your mask on, let them see your mask change shape. Yay! Yay! I'm going to rejoice in the difficult times because it doesn't change who God is. I'm going to rejoice in the, in, the, in the valleys because it doesn't change who God is. I'm going to choose every day to say, yay, yes, God is good. God is with me. God is for me in the name of Jesus. Yay, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. When you govern by fear, it's not of God. God's not given you a spirit of fear. But He says, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Why do we forget that? Why do we forget that God is with us? How come is it that the enemy's got an ability to steal the presence of God from our lives? He doesn't really steal it, but he somehow gets our minds confused and our minds murky, and we somehow start focusing on the giants and not on God. He says, I'll fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod, I want you to underline it, and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Surely, David is persuaded that wherever he goes, goodness, mercy, goodness, just now I clicked my neck. Mercy, goodness, and mercy are following me. When I go through a difficult time, my hope is in the Lord that there's goodness and mercy going to come out of this. I know that when I go through a sad time, goodness and mercy, God has promised it, is going to follow me all the days of my life. I want to tell somebody tonight that favor and breakthrough are your portion. And though you have a flood in your life at this time, Jesus is still alive and goodness and mercy is going to come past you in Jesus' name. Three things I want to give you tonight. Three. I'm going to try my best quickly to give you three things. I'm not a preacher that sticks to points and says three things to success, but I'm just giving you three things because I didn't do math at school and I can only remember three. Number one. I know it might sound simple tonight. Never forget that God is with you. How many times we speak to Christians and they tell you, but if God is for me, then why this? I sometimes can't answer, but all I can tell you is that He is for you, that God is with you, that He'll never leave you nor forsake you, that God is still God in the midst of trial, in the midst of challenge. In Genesis 15 verse 1, when God spoke to Abram, He said, After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. When Joseph was sold as a slave and he was working in Potiphar's house, Genesis 39 verse 2, the Bible says, The Lord was with Joseph and he was a successful man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian and his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. 
So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house and all that he put under his authority. Imagine if Joseph was alive today. Imagine all the Facebook terrorists. Maybe it's the wrong word. Haters. What would they have said about Joseph? Pastor, I said it to us this morning. There are moments you've got to get alone with God. There are moments it's got to be just you and God, and you've got to almost wrestle with God till He says, I bless you in this situation. We can't Facebook God. We can't tweet to God. We can't Instagram to God. Isn't it amazing that most of us would spend more time on on social media than we do set aside just talking to our Heavenly Father who says He'll always be there for us. He's always with us. We listen to the wrong advice and we listen to the haters and we listen to all those things. But shouldn't we just get to a place of being alone with Him like Joseph did and the Lord was with Joseph And because God is with us, no matter what you go through, be it the pit, be it the prison, He'll get you to the palace if you keep trusting Him and honoring Him and loving Him in Jesus' name. God is with you. Joshua, Joshua 1 verse 5 says, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses... So I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous of good courage. We say things like God has delivered. If he's done it for somebody else, he can do it for you. When you watch a preacher like our leader, Pastor Art, and he talks with boldness and confidence about his relationship with God, it's to help you. We don't serve God through the man except through Jesus, but our leader is there to help us and to stimulate us and to build our faith so that we can spend time and get to the place where we get to know Him and realize that He's with us and realize how important church is to stir up our faith and to realize how important corporate prayer is and how important praise is and how important the Word is and how important it is to witness. When Jesus gave the Great Commission, His last words in Matthew 28, verse 19, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Nothing has changed. God is with you. Never forget that the Lord is with you. No matter what you're going through today, God is with you. All over this nation, all over the nations of the earth, the Lord is with you. (laughs) Secondly, remind yourself continually what God has done for you. Remind yourself Continually. Not only as David said, the Lord is with me, but I told you to underline it. It's funny how he says, Your rod and your staff comfort me. I don't know if you're like me, but sometimes you read a passage in the Bible and you, you sort of try and say, Lord, speak to me through that passage. It makes no sense. But when David faced Goliath, if I was David, I would have picked up my slingshot first, I would have picked up a sword first. I mean, I'm going to face a man who is a giant, who is a warrior from youth, who's the best in their battle lines. And David picks up a rod, his staff first. I would have picked up a machine gun. I mean, you don't go into a, a knife fight with a slingshot. Go into a machine gun. He picks up a rod. What is the significance of the rod? It's something I've always tried to do in my own life when I go through battles is I try and make a memorial because the enemy has got a way of stealing your past victories in the Lord. The staff in biblical times 
was more than just a, a tool to herd the sheep. It was more than just a tool to, 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 to fight off the, the things that are attacking the sheep. It, it, it was a memorial, and they would make marks. I've said this before. They would make marks in that staff of victories they had. That's why when David faced Goliath, he said, I've killed the lion and I've killed the bear, and I'm going to bring down Goliath in the name of Jesus. I'm going to bring him down. He's the same like the lion and he's same like the bear. What was he doing? By picking up the staff, he was reminding himself what God has done before, God can do again. What God has done for somebody else, God can do for me. He was reminding himself of the goodness of God. He was reminding himself of the faithfulness of God. We have to remind ourselves. Because I don't know why it is like that, but the enemy seems to make us forget. When God delivered me from cancer, I've got a huge scar on my back. And every now and again, I'll just turn around and admire it. It's not an ugly scar. I mean, it's ugly if you don't know me. I don't want to go to the beach with no shirt on. Because I've got a scar, not for any other reason. But it reminds me. How God delivered me. How I've got to thank Him. And if you can do it for me, my testimony can help somebody else going through a battle. Oh, come on. You've got to remind yourself of what the Lord has done in your life. What God is doing in your life in Jesus' name. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3, the Bible says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. He comforts us in all our troubles. He comforts us in all our troubles. Depend on the Holy Ghost because He's going to help you no matter what you are facing. But He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us, if we forget what God has done, how are we going to comfort others? For the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us with His comfort through Christ. Even when we are weighed down and with troubles, it is for your comfort and salvation. For when we ourselves are comforted, we will certainly comfort you. Can I tell you, as tough as it has been in Durban in the last 10, 10 months, it's been the biggest blessing to me because I've had to learn as a leader. Sometimes I can't answer the question. Sometimes I'll never get the one Sunday I stood up and I said the next fire we're going to see is a fire of, of revival. And the following week we saw the looting and the riots and the fires burning down buildings. But that doesn't change who God is. All things work together for good to those who love God and those who are the called according to His purpose. I might go through the fire. I might go through the floods, but I'm going through it in the name of Jesus. And God is going to comfort me and God is going to strengthen me so I can comfort others. But I can't afford to forget what the Lord has done. It develops you so you can help other people. When God refreshes you, you can refresh others. Verse 8, it says, we, we think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. Paul writing, we were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure. And we thought we would never live through it. In fact, listen to the expectation, we expected to die. But as a result, we stopped relying on ourselves and learned to rely only on God who raises the dead we stop trusting in ourselves. We stop trusting in our own ability. I've been saying this and I'll say it for the rest of my life that when Pastor had declared Genesis 50 verse 20 at the beginning of, of, of the COVID ep pandemic, I began to make that my word. And I used to say, whatever the enemy intends for my harm, God's going to turn around for my good, for His glory, to save many people alive. It's all about the purpose of God. God is in the business of turning things around for your good. God's in the business of taking zeros and making them heroes for His purpose. God is in the business of taking nobodies and making them into somebodies for His glory. In fact, we expected to die. But as a result, we stopped relying on ourselves and learned to rely only on God who raises the dead. 
And He did rescue us from mortal danger, and He will rescue us again. And we have placed our confidence in Him, and He will continue to rescue us. And you are helping us by praying for us. Then many people will give thanks because God has graciously answered so many prayers for our safety. I love this. Then this translation, He did rescue us. He did rescue us from mortal danger. He will rescue us. Again, He has delivered you. He is busy delivering you. And we believe without a shadow of a doubt that He will continue to deliver us. Sure, it might have been tough. Sure, we've gone through some stuff. But we can't sit and always have a pity party. We've got to make a decision. A decision to trust God. A decision to believe God. A decision to say, listen, I can't trust in my own wisdom and my own ability. I'm going to trust in the living God, the creator of the heavens and earth. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, and everything else in between. When I don't know what to do, He knows what to do. He knows where I must cast my nets. He knows where I must reach other people. He knows how to help me in my situation at home. He knows how to help me in my business plan. He's God. That's what Paul comes to say. Listen, it wasn't always easy for me. I know it's not always easy, but God is faithful. I know it doesn't always look possible, but with God all things are possible. I know it might not look like there is a way, but I'm here to tell somebody tonight that God is a way maker. That you've got to remind yourself of the goodness of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God, the favor of God. You've got to remind yourself what God has done for you. You've got to preach to yourself. He has rescued me. He is rescuing me. And I have the belief that He will continue to rescue me. Is he constantly reminding ourselves what God has done and what he's busy doing and what we will believe he will continue to do is one of the ways that keeps us strong in our walk with God. Take time. Take time to write down some pointers of what God has done for you. When you had no peace, he came and gave you peace. When you had no future and a hope, he came and gave you a future and a hope. He gave you vision. He gave you dreams. He gave you this church. He's given us a leader that is leading us through a battle that the world has faced. Somebody that hasn't compromised the word of God ever. And maybe tonight you're watching us on television and you're sitting at home and you lost hope and you faced some serious battles. I want to tell you tonight that you are not alone no matter where you are in the world, that He is there for you. The Bible says, call to Him. Jeremiah 33 verse 3, God's telephone number. Call to Him and He will answer. But I don't know how to pray. Like Pastor Ad said this morning, just say Jesus. Not just Jesus. Jesus, I need you. I want you. I surrender to you. Yes, we do an altar call prayer, but the greatest thing that you can do is call upon the name of Jesus. And the Bible says you will be saved. And then I want to challenge you to get into a local church. Find a CRC near you, but otherwise if there's no CRC near you, get into a local church. Get planted in a local church. The Bible says God sets the members in the church as it pleases Him. So in these closing moments with television tonight, just put your hand upon your heart and say, Jesus, forgive me of all, your, of all my sins. Be my Lord and Savior. I receive you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to ask you, because you've confessed the Lord with your, heart, your mouth and believe in your heart upon His name, I want to declare that you are saved and ask you to contact us. The details are on the screen so we can help you and support you to become that man, that woman of God that He's destined you to be because your life will affect the others. Come on here in Pretoria, all around South Africa. Come on, let's just give all those new believers a great big clap and shout out. And I want to challenge you to get into a local church, ASAP, in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Amen. I've been given a few more minutes to close. I am going to be quick. I said, number one, forget not, uh, uh, remind yourself that God is with you. Never forget that God is with you. Number two, very quickly, remind yourself continually what God has done. And then number three, God is bigger than any battle or struggle that you are facing. God is bigger than any battle or struggle that you and I could ever face. Ephesians 3 verse 20, the Bible said, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ask, think, or imagine. Listen carefully. According to the power that works in us. When last <laughs> did you just take God at His word? So often we're trying to reason things out. I was reading the Bible the other day, and I came across that scripture where the Bible says that the Lord, He went around teaching, preaching, and healing. Jesus went around preaching, teaching, and healing. When last did you just witness to one of your work colleagues? Not when last did you feel spirit led to witness? I felt the anointing come upon me at the right moment. When last did you lay hands on the sick? We're all going to go back to work tomorrow. And like you do when you walk into the office and you see your other work colleagues and we do the usual pleasantries. How are you? Oh, it's great. Thank God. Yeah, good. How was your weekend? Yeah, uh, I'm struggling with migraines. You don't have to go to the bathroom and pray in tongues for half an hour to get the anointing. It's on you. He said, these signs shall follow all those who believe, Mark 16. When last did you do what Jesus called you to do? When last did you just put your hands and say, my brother, my sister, may I just pray for you? I was in church yesterday. I was so fired up for, uh, with faith. And, and, and the Bible says this. You don't have to work out how. How he heals is up to him. We just have to do and be the point of contact. Father, in the name of Jesus, a gentleman in our church, one of our board members, 62 years old, fell from his son's building site about four meters onto some stairs, unconscious, bleeding out of his nose, bleeding out of his ears. Saturday, a couple of weeks back, I get the phone call. The whole family is very involved in our church. Great family. I get the phone call. This is what happened to dad. I realize I've got to go. I go and meet him at the hospital. I see his wife. Obviously, I comfort her. That's the first thing we do. We're Christians. We love people. We help people. And she looks at me and she goes, Pastor, I am believing that nothing is broken, that nothing is hurt, and there's no permanent damage, nothing. And I'm thinking, Jesus. He's fallen four meters on his head. There's blood coming out of his ears and out of his nose and he's unconscious. I said to her, listen, I'm, I'm going to use my pastor card because you're not allowed to go into hospitals and, and get into the emergency rooms and go and pray for him. His daughter-in-law is a doctor. We got in and we're standing next to his bed. And when I say there was no anointing, obviously there was anointing, but I didn't feel anointed. Because sometimes what's stopping us is we think we've got to have a goosebump to obey God. The reason we have those moments with God is that we can recognize who God is and what He's called us to do, but then we've got to go out and do it. <laughs> I looked at him, I said his name, and his eye half opened. He didn't look good. I didn't say that to his wife at the time. And I knew what she was believing God for. 
And I laid my hands upon him with his daughter in law, and I said, Father, we thank you that there is no harm in this body, that you bring total healing, restoration in the name of Jesus. They scanned him, they observed him, they did everything they could to him, and he's now out of hospital. He's walking, there's nothing broken. There's... When last did you just be a vessel in the hands of God? When last did you be the hands and feet of Jesus and tell somebody about the goodness of God? God is bigger than the battle you face. You might not be facing a physical Goliath, but you have your own Goliaths. You have your own mountains to overcome. The Bible says in 1 John 4, verse 5, 5, verse 4 and 5, for whatever is born of God overcomes this world. As a born again believer, you are born of God. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Our faith. What is our faith? What we believe. Do you know the word victory in the original translation is the word Nikkei? It's spelled N-I-K-E. It means, well, we pronounce it Nike. And you know what their slogan is? When Jesus was at a wedding in Cana of Galilee, John chapter 2, and they ran out of wine, his mother said to him, Jesus, they've run out of wine. And he replies to his mother, don't ever say it like Jesus did, but he says, woman, watch her faith. She ignores what he says and says, whatever he tells you to do, just do it. Why have we moved so far away from the simplicity of the gospel? Why are we moved so far away from the simplicity of a relationship with the living God? And we've allowed all this white noise and the events that surround us to limit us. Pastor, I said this morning, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It didn't say that there wouldn't be weapons. It said it wouldn't prosper. In this world, you will face tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Our peace and our victory is found in no other name but the name of Jesus Christ. God is bigger than your sin. God is bigger than your Goliath. God is bigger than your mistakes. There is no other name by which man can be saved. Oh, come on. If you believe that tonight, give God the biggest praise, clap and shout and say it's a year of breakthrough for me, for my family, for my friends, for our nation, in the name of Jesus. No matter what we're facing, come on, give Him praise, give Him praise. Get out of our heads, give Him praise. God is still faithful, God is still in control, God is still able, He's still God alone, He's still good, He's still God, He's still holy, He is still on the throne. Come on, if you believe it, just give Him that biggest praise tonight. Oh, come on, He loves you. Love Him back. He loves you. Love Him back in the name of Jesus. I want every head bowed, every eye closed all over this place. If you're standing, remain standing. Nobody moving around just for a moment. Jesus is real. Jesus is real. He loves you. I often pray and say, Lord, if you're not in it, I don't want it. Because I want you to breathe on my life. I want you to breathe through my life. He's real. You're here tonight, here in Pretoria, there in Johannesburg, Bloemfontein, in one of the CRC churches. You're watching us on live stream, YouTube, Facebook. I don't know where you are watching from. I want to tell you with all sincerity, God loves you. For God so loved the world, it doesn't have to make sense, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. I knew there was something missing in my life for a long time. And I used to call myself a Christian, but I was religious. And even the day that I gave my heart to Jesus, there was an element of doubt. But as I said that prayer, and I confessed with my mouth and believed in my heart upon the Lord Jesus Christ. He entered my life in a very real way that nobody can ever take from me. I had an encounter with God. 
And I've been on a journey with God ever since. And tonight, God wants you to surrender all to Him. God wants you to have an encounter with Him where He becomes the Lord of your life, the owner of your life, where you fully surrender. Or maybe you have surrendered. And for whatever reason, you got distracted. And for whatever reason, you've wandered away from God and, and you've vacillated with one foot in the church and one foot in the world. I want to tell you tonight that it's time to come back to Him. It's time to offer yourself as a living sacrifice. Or maybe you're here tonight and you're saying, listen, if I'm to die right now, I don't know where I'd wake up. My brother, my sister, you can have assurance that if you give your heart to Jesus, you'll wake up in His presence after you die. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So while every head is bowed, every eye is closed all over Pretoria, Johannesburg, Bloembertain, all the CRC churches around the country, wherever you're watching from tonight, believers are praying. Come on, there should be a, a hum of believers praying quietly but strong. You've never given your heart to Jesus. You have, but you've wandered away. You haven't got that assurance of salvation. I want to pray with you. It's the greatest honor and a privilege for any pastor to pray with somebody to bring him back to Christ. If that is you tonight all over this place, quickly slip up your hand high. Say, yes, you're talking to me. Pray for me. Pray for me in the name of Jesus. Come on, quickly. Lift up a high so I can see it. Come on, quickly high. Bless you, bless you, bless you. All over this place. Come on, slip it up high. There's a stirring in your heart. It's not going to make sense to your head. You've got to follow God speaking to your heart tonight. There's a stirring in your heart. Quickly slip up your hand so I can see it. Say, yes, you're talking to me. I want to give my heart to Christ. Bless you. Thank you, bless you, bless you, bless you. I want to come back to Christ tonight. Lift up your hand. They're in Johannesburg. They're in Bloemfontein. They're in Cape Town, Durban, Port Elizabeth, wherever you are. Come on, quickly slip up your hand. In the name of Jesus. Kimberly, quickly slip up your hand. God loves you. And He's knocking on the door of your heart and you've got to respond to Him. He's not going to force Himself upon you. You've got to respond to Him in Jesus' name. So this evening, if you raised your hand, you may put your hands down. Thank you. You may look at me for a second. If you raised your hand, or you should have raised your hand here in Pretoria, Johannesburg, Bloemfontein, all the CRC churches, we want to take you to take a step of faith. And we want you to pick up your personal belongings in a moment and come meet us in the front so we can pray with you a prayer that will change your life like it changed Pastor Utt's life, like it changed my life, like it's changed, changed countless millions of people around the world. Come on, if that's you, your love and encouragement of your friend, bring him to Christ this morning. Come on, come quickly. In the name of Jesus, come, come on. Here in Pretoria, there in Johannesburg, there in Bloemfontein, come quickly, come on. Come on, respond to God's love tonight. In the name of Jesus, come on, come. He loves you from the balcony, come. Come on, come. In Jesus' name, there in Bloemfontein, come quickly. Step out of that chair tonight. In the name of Jesus, come on, CRC. This is what we're about, winning the loss bringing our brothers and sisters back to Christ. Come on, now is the time. Now is the time in Jesus' name. A first time commitment. You've never given your heart to Jesus. You have, but you've wandered away. Oh, come on, CRC. Come on, we can do better than that. Come on, encourage your friends. Come on, your love, your encouragement. Come, 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 come. Oh, come on, keep clapping. Come on, come, from the balcony, come. Come on, they're in Bloemfontein. Come on, they're in Johannesburg. Come on, come, 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 come. They're in Cape Town, Durban, come, come. They're in Kimberley, come. Watch of Strum, come. Come on, it's our time. Come on, open up your heart. Give Him everything. Come on, there's still more, there's still more. Keep coming, keep coming. They're in Bloemfontein. Come on, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. They're in Johannesburg. Keep coming. Come on, come on. There's more. Come on. I can feel it. Come on, come. This is our culture. This is our DNA. Come on. Say to that person you brought to church tonight, come on, I'll walk with you. I'll stand with you. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. See, I'll see you.
as I'm standing here, I'm reminded of a story past that always tells, or told us many times, about somebody in Bloemfontein who during the altar call heard God speak to his spirit, not to his head, years ago, and made a decision to give his heart to Christ. And after the services, they were dismissed, went to the bathroom, had a heart attack and died. He just made it. He just made it. Maybe there's somebody here tonight, somebody in one of the other CRC churches, your life isn't right with God. I'm not saying you're going to have a heart attack. Please, listen to me now. But you're hearing the voice of God. There's a stirring here. Don't say tomorrow maybe, or the next day maybe. You come now. You come now. Come on, you come out of that chair now. You come down those stairs now. You come to the front now. They're in Johannesburg. Come on, they're in Bloemfontein, in one of the other churches. Come on, come. Come on, now is the time. Now is the time of your salvation. We're not going to wait till tomorrow. Now is the day of salvation. In the name of Jesus, just come quickly. Come on. Come on. There's still one or two people moving to the front. Come on, come quickly. Come on. Come on. Say to that friend, come on. I know it's your time. Tonight's your time. Tonight's your time. In the name of Jesus, come, 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 come. Come, come, come. Come, come, come. Come on, come. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God loves you, man. God loves you. 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 Come on, we're waiting for you. Come quickly. Come on, come. God loves you. God loves you. Come on, God loves you. Great. Awesome. God loves you. God loves you. Come on, come quickly. Come quickly. Run. Don't trip, but come quickly. Oh, come on. Give the Lord a great big clap and a shout. I don't know if you can see it, but I can see the altar in Bloemfontein. It's full. It's full, full, full. I mean, we love the church of Jesus Christ, but we love CRC. Come on, God is using this harvesting machine to touch the lives of countless people, and we don't know who these lives are going to touch in the future. Before we pray, I want to say this last thing quickly. See, I didn't preach for four weeks while I was hopping around. I got saved in another church years ago but I didn't understand purpose. I thank God for my pastor tonight because he taught me purpose in Christianity. I thank God that I've got a purpose to live for that's bigger than making a living. It's bigger than my comfort. It's bigger than just trying to look good. I've got a purpose and that's to win the world to Christ. Come on, let's just give it up that we've got a church full of purpose, that we chase purpose wherever we go in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. The biggest harvest of souls is still going to come. Pastor has prophesied it in the name of Jesus. To each one of you here in the front, here in Pretoria, there in Bloemfontein, Johannesburg, all the other CRC churches, even those that are watching on social media tonight, just put your hand upon your heart. Simple prayer, we're going to pray, and we're going to just give ourselves back to God. And just say this with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God, that you died for my sins, that you rose from the grave to give me life. And I ask you, Jesus, to come and take your rightful place as my Lord and as my Savior. I ask you to guide me, to guard me, to keep me, and to use me for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, by the power of your confession, you are saved. God's got a great plan for your life. We want to pray for you, help you. Here in Johann uh, Pretoria, please turn to your left. There in Johannesburg, to your left as well. And there in Bloemfontein to your right, my left. And come on all over the other country, the country. Just give those people a great big hand clap in Jesus' name. Come on, God is good. And he's got great plans for your life in Jesus' name.